Hey up me duck YouTube, welcome back to another video with Rams fan. This is a history of your club series one episode eight where we'll be talking about the uh, now yo-yo club but previous Euro Europa League finalists Fulham Football Club. Uh, turbulent history to certainly say but we'll start when they were founded in 1879. As Fulham, St Andrew's Church, Sunday School, Football Club. Bet you're glad they're short in that, eh? They were founded by worshippers, mostly who were good at cricket, at the Church of England on Star Road in West Kensington, uh, which is now St Andrew's in Fulham Fields. Fulham's mother church still stands today with a plaque commemorating the team's foundation. They won the West London Amateur Cup in 1887 and having shortened the name from Fulham St Andrews to its present form in December 1888. They then won the West London League in 1893 at its very first attempt. One of the club's first ever kits was half red, half white shirts with white shorts worn in the 1886-87 season. Fulham started playing at their current ground of Craven Cottage in 1896. Their first game is against, was against now-defunct rivals Minerva. Fulham are one of the oldest established clubs in southern England, actually, currently playing professional football. Though there are many non-league sides, like Kent side Cray Wanderers, who are several decades older. The club gained professional status on the 12th of December, 12, no, 12th of December 1898, the same year they were admitted into the Southern League's second division. They were the third club from London to turn professional, following Arsenal, which was then named Royal Arsenal in 1891, and Will Millwall in 1893. They adopted a red and white kit during the 1896-97 season. In 1902-03, the club were on promotion for Mr. Vision, entering the Southern League at First Division. The, the club's first recorded all-white club kit came in 1903, and ever since then, the club has been playing in all-white shirts and black shorts, with socks going through various evolutions of black and all white but are now normally white only. The club won the Southern League twice in 1905-06 and 1906-07. Fulham joined the Football League after the second of the second of the Southern League triumphs. The club's first league game, playing in the second division's 1907-08 season, saw them lose 1-0 at home to Hull City in September 1907. The first win came a few days later at Derby County's baseball ground by a scoreline of 1-0. Fulham finished the season three points short of promotion in fourth place. The club progressed all the way to the semi-final of that season's FA Cup, a run that actually included an 8-3 away win at Luton Town. How great would it be to be at that match? Well, obviously not for a Luton fan. In the semi-final, however, they were then heavily beaten again. Well, flip side, kind of. Uh, they lost 6-0 to uh, Newcastle United. This is still the record loss for an FA Cup semi-final game. Two years later, the club won the London Challenge Cup in the 1909-10 season. Fulham's first season in Division 2 turned out to be the highest that the club would finish for 21 years. Until in 1927-28, when the club were relegated to the third division south, which was created in 1920. Hussein Higazi, an Egyptian forward, was one of the first non-British pl players to appear in the Football League. But he only played one game for Fulham in 1911, marked with a goal. Afterwards, he played for the non-league team at Dulwich Hamlet. During this period, businessman and politician Henry Norris was the club chairman. And curiously, he had an indirect role in the foundation of Fulham's local rivals, Chelsea, 
which if you want to hear about that, I have posted a video. When he rejected an offer from businessman Gus Mears to move to Fulham to land where the present-day Chelsea Stadium, Stamford Bridge, is situated, Mears decided to create his own team to occupy the ground. In 1910, Norris started to combine his role at Fulham with the chairmanship of Arsenal. Fulham became the first British team to sell hot dogs at their ground in 1926. See, this is what you're tuning, guys. These facts, which no one ever knew about. Fulham had several high-profile international players during the 1920s, including Len Oliver and Albert Barrett. After finishing 5th, 7th and 9th, at that time out of 22 teams, in their first three seasons in the 3rd Division South, Fulham won the division in 1931-32. In doing so, they beat Torquay United, an emphatic 10-2 win. And they managed to win 24 out of the 42 games and scored 111 goals. Thus being promoted back to the second division. I mean, they've got to be with that now, surely. The next season, they missed out on a cons second consecutive promotion, finishing third behind Tottenham Hotspur and Stoke City. A mixed bag of league performance followed, although the club also reached another FA Cup semi-final during the 1935-36 season. But they were also to draw with Austria in 1936, before Anschluss... Anschluss? <laughs> uh... Not very certain about pronunciation of uh, Austrian names. The, um, on the 8th of October 1938, Craven Cottage saw its all-time highest attendance at a match against Millwall with a crowd of 49,335 watching the game. League and cup football were severely disrupted by the outbreak of World War II in 1939, with the Football League split into regional divisions temporarily, with the National Football League World Cup and the London World Cup up for grabs. Craven Cottage was used, like many grounds, for fitness and training of the Army Youth Reserves. Post-war, a full league programme was only restored for the 1946-47 season. In the third season of what is now considered the modern era of football, Fulham finished top of the second division, with a win-loss draw record of 24-9-9, identical to that of which they won the third division south 17 years previously. John Fox Watson made a pioneering transfer to Real Madrid in 1948, becoming one of the first players from the United Kingdom to sign for a whole high-profile side abroad. Promotion to the top tier of English football saw the club perform poorly, finishing 17th in their first year and 18th in their second. In only their third season of First Division football, Fulham finished rock bottom of the 22-team league in the 1951-52 season, where they won only eight of their 42 games. On the 20th of May 1951, Fulham played one of their first ever games in North America in an exhibition match against Celtic at Delarimia Stadium in Montreal in front of a, a crowd of 29,000 spectators. Possibly the single most influential character in Fulham's history is Johnny Haynes. He's also known as Mr. Fulham, or the maestro, as Haynes later became to be known. He signed for the Cottagers as a schoolboy in 1950 making his first team debut on the, on Boxing Day against Southampton at Craven Cottage in the 1951-52 relegation season. Haynes played for another 18 years, notching 657 appearances. This is along with many other club records. His last appearance for Fulham came on the 17th of January 1970. He is often considered as the greatest player in Fulham history and never played for another team in Britain. He gained 56 caps for England and 22 of them as captain, with many being earned while playing for Fulham in the second division.
Haynes was injured in a car accident, unfortunately, in Blackpool in 1962, but by his own admissions never regained fitness or form to play for England again. Missing out on the England's victory in the FIFA World Cup of 1966, for which he would have had a, stood a chance of being selected. The Stevenage Road stand was renamed in his honour after the death in another car crash in 2005. Fulham reached the 1957-58 FA Cup semi-finals, the best cup run of Haynes' career, and the nearest he came to a major trophy win at playing in England. They were eliminated in a replay by the remnants of Manchester United's Busby Babes team that had been decimated in the Munich air disaster the month before. United were the first top division team Fulham played in that cup run. Fulham won promotion back to the first division in the following season by finishing second to Sheffield Wednesday. Also joining Fulham in 1958 was Graham Leggett, who, score, who went on to score 134 goals in 277 appearances, making him the club's fifth all-time top goal scorer. In the 1959-60 season, they achieved 10th position in the first division, which until 9th in the 2003-04 season was their highest ever league position. This accompanied another appearance in the last four of the FA Cup in 1962. By this time, the club were regularly playing in front of 30,000-plus crowds at Craven Cottage, despite the fact they were struggling in the league. The club experienced several close escapes from relegation, none more so than in 1965-66, on the morning of the 26th of February 1966, Fulham were bottom with just 15 points and 29 matches. The last 13 games saw Fulham win 9 and draw 2 of their games to manage to reach probably a great escape to reach safety. Eventually, however, the club suffered relegation in the 1967-68 season, having won just 10 out of their 42 games. Even that, however, was not as catastrophic as the calamity of next season, when they only won 7 of their games in 42. The club were again relegated to the third division. Note that this is not the same as the third division south, as the regional third division has been removed by the create in the 1959 creation of the fourth division. The aforementioned third division hiatus lasted only two seasons before the club was promoted back to the second division as runners up in 1970-71. This spell also saw Fulham invited to the Anglo-Italian Cup, which saw the club draw four out of their four games in the 1972-73 season. This preceded a period of high-profile signings for the club under Alex Stock in the mid-1970s, including Alan Mullery and Bobby Moore. Fulham reached their only FA Cup final in 1975, having won their first, seven, first semi-final in five attempts. The club then lost to West Ham United in the final. This gave the club qualification to another European tournament, the Anglo-Scottish Cup, where they made the final, but lost to Middlesbrough. Lord Best played 47 times for the club in the 1976-77 season, and Rodney Marsh, who, having grown up with Fulham in the 1960s, went on to play First Division football and play for England, rejoined the club that same season but only played 16 games. This capped one of the most successful eras in Fulham's history. The club were relegated again after winning only 11 games in their 42 matches in the 1979-80 season, which eventually resulted in Bobby Campbell sacking in October 1980, to be replaced by Malcolm McDonald. With a strong squad during his 1980-84 period in charge, which had players such as uh, Ray Hooton, Pony Gale, Paul Parker, Jerry Payton and Ray Lewington. They won promotion again in 1981-82, back to the second division, although the promotion was overshadowed by the suicide of former defender Dave Clement a few weeks before promotion was sealed. It's a very depressing plot, this, isn't it? In 1980, Fulham founded the Rugby League Club that is now London Broncos, designed to be an extra stream of income for the football club. 
Scott, which made financial losses every year while linked to Fulham FC. Then called Fulham Rugby League. They played at Craven Cottage until moving away from their parent club in 1984. So for all them rugby fans, I don't know why you click on it, there's something for you. In 1978, Fulham had signed Gordon Ivor Davis, who during two spells at Fulham became the club's leading goalscorer of all time, with a total of 178 goals in all competitions. The record still stands today. Fulham narrowly missed out on back-to-back promotions to the first division, where they lost to my team, 1-0, Derby County, away on the last day of the season in 1982-83 season. Although the match was abandoned after 88 minutes due to a pitch invasion and inexplicably never replayed or finished. The side which had shown so much promise was quickly sold off as the club were in debt. So it was no surprise when the club were relegated again to the third division in 1986. The club nearly actually went out of business in 1987 by an ill-advised merger attempt with Queen's Park Rangers. It was only the intervention of ex-player Jimmy Hill that allowed the club to stay in business as a restructured Fulham FC 1987 Limited. In 1987, the club took part in what was then the longest penalty deciders ever recorded. It needed 28 spot kicks to sort out a winner between them and Aldershot following a Fright Rover trophy match, which I think is now the EFL trophy, yes. In 1992, foundation of the Premier League and the resignation of 22 clubs from the Football League restored Fulham to that league's second division. However, the club were relegated to the new third division after a poor start to the 1993-94 season, following which Ian Branfoot was appointed as team manager. After an 8th place finish in Brantford's first season in charge, the club hit its lowest ever final league position in the 1995-96 season, where they finished 17th out of 24. Brantford was sacked as manager, but remained at the club in other capacities for a short while. In February 1996, Mickey Adams became player manager, and Adams oversaw an upturn in form that lifted the side out of relegation danger. The next season, he engineered a second-place league finish, missing out on first place because several years previously, the league had dropped the old goal difference system in favour of goal scored tally, meaning Fulham finished behind Wigan Athletic. The club's chairman, Jimmy Hill, had argued that goal scored should decide players of teams tied on points, and the Football League clubs had voted the system in. Egyptian businessman Mohamed Al Fayyad brought the club for £6.25 million in the summer of 1997. The club was purchased via Bill Muddyman's Muddyman Group. M- Mickey Adams was replaced by Al Fayyad in the aftermath of a mid table start to the season. He installed a two-tier management dream team of Ray Wilkins as first team manager and Kevin Keegan as chief operating officer. That is a very weird title. Pledging that the club would reach the Premier League within five years. After an argument over team selection, Wilkins left the club in May 1998 to hand over full management duties to Keegan, who helped steer the club to promotion the next season winning 101 points out of a possible 138, after spending £1.1 million to sign Paul Pesciselido from West Bromwich Albion, who was top scorer and captain by Chris Coleman, then the most expensive footballer outside the top two divisions of the English league. In 1999, Keegan left Fulham to become manager of England, and Paul Bracewell was put in charge. Bracewell was sacked in March 2000 as Fulham's promising early season form dwindled away to a mid-table finish. Frenchman Jean Tigana was put in charge and having signed a number of young stars, including the French striker Louis Sahar, he guided Fulham to their promotion in five seasons in the 2000 and 2001 season, giving Fulham top flight status for the first time since 1968. 
Well, and once again, amassed 101 points out of a possible 138 in their skin elating title run, which was crowned with an open top bus parade down Fulham Palace Road. They are the only team to have twice reached 300 points in the season. During the season, Chris Coleman was involved in a car crash that put him out of action for well over a year and eventually ended his playing career after he failed to make a sufficient recovery. Fulham's run through the division saw a large turnover of players, with the only player to play for the club in all four leagues being Sean Davis. Fulham returned to the top division of English football and competed in the Premier League for the first time. The club finished the 2001-2002 season in 13th place. Fulham were then the only team to host top flight football with some standing areas in the 21st century. But due to restrictions on standing, this was not allowed to continue. Clubs promoted from the second division had only three years to make their ground all-seater. Fulham were forced to ground share with QPR at Loftus Road during the 2002-03 and 2003-04 season while Craven Cottage was rebuilt as an all-seated stadium. The fears that Fulham would not return to the cottage after it was revealed that Al Fayad had sold the first right to build on the ground to a property development firm. In 2002-03, Fulham spent most of the season in the lower half of the table. Chairman Al Fayad told manager Gene Tigana that his contract would not be renewed at the end of the season. However, with five games left to play and relegation still possible, Tigana was sacked and Chris Coleman was temporarily put in charge. Fulham won 10 points from a possible 15 and managed to avoid relegation. Coleman was appointed manager on permanent basis in the summer of 2003, despite predictions that the inexperience of Coleman would result in Fulham's relegation. He kept the club, however, well clear of relegation guiding them to a club record ninth place in his debut season. This might have been greater had the club not come under significant financial pressure to sell Louis Sahar to Manchester United, for whom they did receive a club record fee of £13 million. Fulham lost a legal case against former manager Tigana in 2004 after Al Fayad wrongly alleged that Tigana had overpaid more than £7 million for new players and had negotiated transfers in secret. Coleman notched up another satisfactory performance in 2004 5 and guided Fulham to secure a 13th place finish. The following season, Fulham improved by one place, finishing 12th. The high point of the season was a 1-0 win over local rivals and reigning champions Chelsea in the West London derby. Chelsea had only lost two games in two and a half years. The 2006-07 season proved to be Coleman's last, as on the 10th of April 2007, Fulham terminated his contract with immediate effect. His replacement was Northern Ireland manager Laurie Sanchez. Fulham only gained four points from five games under Sanchez as care the taker manager. They ensured top flight survival that season by defeating a weakened Liverpool side 1 0 in the penultimate match of the season, and Sanchez was appointed manager. Sanchez received strong financial backing from the board and made a number of signings during the summer break after just two league wins in the first five months of the season, and with Fulham in the relegation zone. It was dismissed on the 21st of December 2007 after a defeat to Newcastle United. Roy Hodgson was named as the new manager of Fulham on the 28th of December 2007 and took up his contractual duties on the 30th of December, just two days before the January transfer window opened. Hodgson's tenure did not start well and it took a month to secure his first win against Aston Villa, courtesy of a Jimmy Bullard free kick. Fulham continued to struggle and a 3-1 home defeat in April of a hands of fellow strugglers Sunderland left Hodgson on the verge of tears in the post-match press conference and many pundits writing off Fulham's survival chances. Despite the negative press, however, Hodgson continued to believe survival was attainable. The turning of a point of the season came in the third to last match against Manchester City. Fulham trailed 2-0 at half-time and had the Premier League scores of that time become results, they would have been relegated. However, the introduction of Diamanzi Kamara heralded 
the start of a fantastic comeback. Kamara struck twice as Fulham registered an amazing 3-2 victory. Fulham then won a crucial match against fellow strugglers at Birmingham City at Craven Cottage, leaving survival in the club's own hands. Barring a goal rush from fellow strugglers Reading, a win against Portsmouth side looking ahead to their fourth FA Cup final would guarantee its survival. With 15 minutes to play at Portsmouth, Fulham were drawing and with Birmingham City and Reading leading comfortably against Blackburn Rovers and Derby County respectively, they looked likely to be relegated. However, Fulham earned a free kick with 76 minutes played. Jimmy Bullard again delivered and found Danny Murphy, who headed home the decisive goal, sparking manic celebrations from the travelling fans. Hodgson and surge survival against all odds, breaking several club records in process and cementing his place in Fulham folklore. Fulham narrowly missed out on the UEFA club place via f- airplay by a dubious 0.8 of a point behind Manchester City, who lost 8-1 at Middlesbrough. In 2008-9, Fulham finished 7th, their highest ever league placing, earning qualification for the Enegro Europa League, the second time that the club had entered a UEFA competition. 2009-10 was arguably the most successful season in the club's history. They were eliminated from the FA Cup in the quarterfinals for the second year running and finished 12th in the Premier League, despite fielding weakened teams in the last few matches. In the Onegro Europa League season, however, Fulham reached the final, meeting Spanish club Atletico Madrid, who had dropped down from the Champions League at the Volksbadadion in Hamburg. Their first European Cup final. The Cottagers were beat 2-1 after extra time, having drawn one all at f- after full time. The achievement of taking Fulham so unexpectedly far, beating famous teams like Hamburger SV, Juventus, Holders Shakhtar Donetsk and Basel, Basel in the competition, led to Roy Hodgson being voted the LNA Manager of the Year by the widest margin in the history of the award. The home match in the round of 16 was arguably Fulham's greatest result in the history of the club. Despite losing 3-1 in the first leg at Italian giant Juventus and falling behind minutes into the second leg at Raven Cottage, Fulham scored four goals with no reply from Juventus. At the end of the season, Hodgson left Fulham to manage Liverpool. On the 29th of July 2010, Mark Hughes was named the successor of Roy Hodgson. Signing a two-year contract with the club, Hughes had previously managed Manchester City, the Welsh national team and Blackburn. Hughes' first match in charge was against Blackburn Rovers at the Reebok Stadium. The highlight of the season was a 4-0 win in the FA Cup over London rivals Tottenham Hotspur. All goals coming in the first half. Hughes resigned as the manager of Fulham on the 2nd of June 2011, having spent fewer than 11 months at the club. The Whites had encouraged in finish in 8th position and qualified for the Europa League via the fair play regulations. On the 7th of June, Martin Joll signed a two-year contract with Fulham, becoming successor to Hughes. Joel's first match was a 3-0 Europa League win against NSI Runavik of the Faroe Islands on the 30th of June. How bad was like, If you lost against that team, how bad must you be? Uh, Fulham then navigated their way with some ease to the group stage of the Europa League through late summer. However, the Cottagers were knocked out in the last seconds of group stage matches. Odense BK equalising to make a draw, leaving Fulham in third place with Polish side Vizsla Vizsla Krako instead of progressing to the next round. Fulham's Premier League form in the 2011-12 season was mixed, with a continuing away record hangover of previous seasons dragging on. In October 2011, Fulham had an emphatic 6-0 win over neighbours QPR, with Andrew Johnson scoring a hat-trick for Fulham in the match. The January 2012 transfer window saw Bobby Zamora move over the Hammersmith flyover to Lotus Loft, sorry, not Lotus, Loftus Road, with Russian striker Pavel Pogrebinyak coming in place from VFB Stuttgart. 
The New Year saw two further hat-tricks scored by Clint Dempsey. On the 11th of February 2012, Pro Pro scored on his debut in the 2-1 win over Stoke City. In March 2012, a 5-0 win against Wolverhampton Wanderers saw a hat-trick from Pog Rebunak. The Cottagers broke their historic drought on Merseyside with a 1-0 win over Liverpool at Anfield on May Day. And another win against Sunderland in the last home game meant that Fulham were only one point short of equaling their largest points haul in the Premier League, with just one game remaining. However, they failed to achieve this after losing their last game away at Tottenham. In 2012-13 season, Fulham ended a seven-match winless run by beating Swansea City 3-0 at the Liberty Stadium on the final game of the season on the 19th of May 2013. Fulham finished the season in 12th place. Shahid Khan took over as chairman in July 2013. But after a poor start to the 2013-14 season, having only amassed 10 points from 13 games, Martin Joll was sacked as manager on the 1st of December 2013, with René Moulenstein taking charge as head coach. Moulenstein was replaced by Felix McGaff after just 17 games in charge, following no upturn in form. But fortunes did not improve, and Fulham were eventually relegated to the Championship after a 4-1 defeat away to Stoke on the 3rd of May. Post-season, the media criticised Chairman Shahid Khan's decision to sack Moulinstein and appoint the third manager of the season in McGaff. Fulham broke the championship transfer record that summer in a restructuring of the squad by McGaff. But after an alarming start to the new season, amassing just one point in the seven games, McGaff was sacked in September 2014, with Kit Simons appointed as caretaker manager. Fulham eventually finished the season in 17th place the following season. After another squad overhaul, the team suffered an inconsistent start to the season. And after a 5-2 loss at home to Birmingham City and lying in 12th place, Kit Simmons was sacked as manager in November 2010. It paved the way for Serbian Slavisa Jokanovic, who I might talk about a bit later, to be appointed on the 27th of December 2015. Fulham's fortunes did not improve greatly following Jokanovic's appointment, but the team finished the 2015-16 Champions season in 20th place, avoiding relegation by 11 points. The 2016-17 season saw huge improvements in both results and performances. Following a third squad overhaul in as many years, and despite an inconsistent start, the team saw a significant improvement from October onwards, which would throw them up the table. Fulham secured a sixth place finish after an impressive finish to the season and entered the playoffs, but they were undone by a controversial Jan Kermorgant penalty, which saw Reading triumph 2 1 and aggregate. Despite a poor start to the following season, the club went on a club record 23 game unbeaten run in the league, which led to a third place finishing, narrowly missing out on an automatic promotion. And the team went on to win the EFGL Championship playoff final against Aston Villa to return to the Premier League on the 26th of May 2018. Following a poor start to life back in the Championship, Jukanovic was sacked on the 14th of November 2018 and replaced with former Leicester manager Claudio Ranieri. Results ultimately did not improve under Ranieri and he left the club in February 2019 after just four months in charge. He was replaced by Scott Parker as caretaker manager who could not save the club from relegation on the 3rd of April 2019. Parker was appointed manager on a permanent basis on the 10th of May 2019. In this season that was interrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic, sure you're all a bit bored about that, Parker led the club straight back to the Premier League on the 4th of August 2020, defeating London rivals Brentford 2-1 in the player final after a fourth place finish. So, that's about it for the Fulham half of thing. Just want to briefly mention about Michael of Derby County and how Koku has been sacked. And I'm sure you've already heard that by now, but who I personally think should be the next manager. And I've already mentioned his name. Jakanovic has been linked, and I think that would be a great one. He clearly the 23 game winning run is something which sounds quite good. Uh, there's also um, 
Rafa Benitez is now two to one uh, to be the next manager. Also, would be incredibly happy to have him any day. Uh, he can um, get us out of this league and get us out of this sticky situation. Uh, the final one which I would want is uh, probably Eddie Howe or Paul Cooks. Um, I don't think Wayne Rooney, definitely not. John Terry, probably not as well for the situation we're in. So that is just my rant about my club and the history of Fulham's club. I hope you enjoyed. I will. And by the way, last week I had a week off. I was just needed a break. Uh, had a lot of work to do elsewhere. Um, but I will now try and be consistent. And next week. And on Sunday, I will do the National League North and South Best tra Summer Transfer. I know that seems ages ago. I'm sorry, guys. It's just I've been really behind and stuff and things. Um, this weekly thing's clearly going to need to speed up a bit. And the history of your club. And I think it's Leicester. I think potentially Leicester City's next week. I will check that, though. Uh I'm doing it alphabetically order, so feel free in the comments section if you dispute. Okay, bye for now.